This episode is brought to you by Shopify. That's the sound of another sale on Shopify. The moment a business dream becomes reality. Shopify is the commerce platform revolutionizing millions of businesses worldwide. They simplify selling online and in person and provide 24-7 support so you can focus on successfully growing your business. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash offer 22, all lowercase. As if the McCrispy couldn't get any better, Bacon and Ranch just entered the chat. The Bacon Ranch McCrispy, available at participating McDonald's for a limited time. Ba-da-ba-ba-ba. This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 2242. Five things to consider before making a purchase by Dan Erickson with nosidebar.com. And I'm your host and personal finance enthusiast, Diana Merriam. Now let's get right to it as we optimize your life. Five things to consider before making a purchase by Dan Erickson with nosidebar.com. Over the years, I've bought many things that I don't really need. I'm sure most of you have too. After all, many of us have been raised in an instant gratification culture. We're constantly bombarded with visions of shiny new toys. The media knows how to push our want buttons. Our friends show us the cool stuff they just bought. We want. Our neighbors just got a cool new car or boat. We want. But wait, what if I told you that there are many ways to tame our want? There are. Wanting is an emotional response to being unsatisfied with what you already have. Trying to satisfy yourself with more stuff is similar to a drug addiction. You get a temporary high, but after it wears off, you want more. Before we discuss five things to consider before buying, let's compare the differences between need and want. Need. According to dictionary.com, a need is a requirement, necessary duty, or obligation. A need is necessity arising from circumstances of a situation. Want. On the other hand, want is to wish, crave, demand, or desire. See the difference? I may need a cup to drink from, but I don't need a 16 piece set of crystal glasses. I may need a car for transportation, but I don't need a Hummer. I may need a place to sleep, but I don't need a 5,000 square foot mansion. Sometimes we want things we don't really need. I'm a musician, I want more instruments. I'm a homeowner, I want nice stuff in my house. But I've learned how to curb my wants. This is not to say we should never buy things we want. Still, we should evaluate each want critically before we buy. Here are five things to consider before making any purchase. Number one, appreciate what you already have. One reason we break down and buy more stuff is that we don't really appreciate what we already have. When I find myself considering a new purchase, I ask myself, do I already have something that will fulfill the purpose? If the answer is yes, I then ask, do I need another thing to fulfill the same purpose? Most of the time, I cannot find a valid reason. So instead of buying something new, I focus on the item I already have. This allows me to appreciate that item more. Number two, weigh the costs. How much do you have to give up in order to get what you want? Of course, the immediate answer is money, but it goes deeper than that. You're also giving up time. Money only comes with time. When we spend money, we have to work harder and longer to recoup our loss. This not only steals our time, but it takes time away from our loved ones and our passions. Is the new gadget really worth it? Number three, study your options. This might not work for everyone, but it often works for me. When I really want something that I don't need, I study my options. Essentially, I go window shopping or internet browsing. As I study my options, I consider what I already have. I weigh the costs of the possible purchase. Often, I discover that there are too many choices of new products. This allows me time and space to reconsider the purchase. Number four, take a walk. Exercise is magic. Not only do I use exercise to help deal with stress, 
I use exercise to stay on an even keel. Walking is one of my favorite forms of exercise because it's meditative. When I walk, I often reflect on my surroundings. I also reflect on my own wants and needs. I ponder what is really important in my life. Often, I discover that the walk itself is much more important than many of the things that money can buy. Walking gives you time to consider the pros and cons of your motivations to buy. You might discover that your immediate burning desire for something decreases after a walk. And number five, practice restraint. In order to tame the savage beast of want, you have to learn to say no. Saying no is a form of discipline. Like anything else, saying no takes practice. Start by saying no to little things. Say no to an extra spoon of sugar in your coffee. Say no to another pair of shoes when you already have five pairs of shoes. When we practice restraint with little things, we learn how to say no more often. One last piece of advice. We're often most tempted when we resist. When we try to stop a behavior too abruptly, when we resist a desire, we're constantly dwelling on that exact thing. That's why so many people fail at dieting or exercise programs. We try too hard. We go for all or nothing. When we fail to reach the desired goal, we feel defeated and return to former behavior. Beasts are not tamed quickly. It takes time. Allow yourself the room to make errors along the way. Focus on your long-term goals. I found this strategy to work very well. One of my long-term goals is to minimize my belongings to the absolute essentials for my situation. This includes my basic needs, my family's needs, my work needs, and tools for my hobbies. Next time you want something you don't really need, consider these five things before making that purchase. You just listened to the post titled, Five Things to Consider Before Making a Purchase by Dan Erickson with nosidebar.com. It's challenging to be intentional about purchases, especially when most of us are used to the instant gratification normalized in our consumerist culture. Our lives are so fast paced that slowing down and being thoughtful about purchases is actually a skill set we need to cultivate. That's why I love to focus on frugality and resourcefulness. Frugality should be empowering. It should help you see that you have enough money to do the things you want because you've done the emotional heavy lifting on figuring out what actually matters to you. I think it also honors what we all know deep down, that material possessions ultimately aren't going to make us happy. So why bother even playing that game? Furthermore, frugality is about respecting the trade of value for money. I don't get enough value out of ordering takeout to justify the cost. I'd much prefer to make my own food because it's a better trade of time and money for value. For me, frugality is not about being cheap. It's about being discerning. And that's another episode of Optimal Finance Daily in the books. Thanks for being here today and making another episode possible. But stick around because our weekly bonus episode is live now. So I'll see you there where your optimal life awaits.